like Steve Bannon, insisting that Trumpy guys all around the world shouldn't have to abide by election results. You can see it at home, coming into sharper focus now, now that we're eight days out from the next national election. Trump issuing a new endorsement of the Republican candidate who's running against Senator Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire in this election. Trump endorses him now by saying outright that what he likes about the guy is that he is, quote, a strong and proud election denier. So they're embracing that term now. You must be a strong and proud election denier. Those are Trump's words in order to get his endorsement as the de facto leader of the Republican Party. Right? You also see it in that odd footage that's being aired by Fox News over the past few days of Trump calling the Republican Senate candidate in Arizona, this guy Blake Masters, the one who's running against Democratic Senator Mark Kelly. Trump tells him on the call that, hey, Blake Masters, you're doing great, but you need to go harder and louder and more insistent on the issue of election denial. You need to be more out there volunteering all the time, saying that elections shouldn't count. And Blake Masters says, oh, yes, I'll do that. I'll go hard on that issue. Why does Trump need that? Why does Trump need that from this Senate candidate in Arizona or the Senate candidate in Nevada? They're not going to be voting on anything related to the 2020 election where Trump lost. Why does Trump want to do this? Why does he want all Republican candidates at every level to insist that elections are for suckers and that election results don't count? The reason he wants to do this is so this idea that elections shouldn't be the way we do things anymore becomes the rallying cry and the operating principle of the Republican Party. And it's working within the Republican Party. I mean, ever since Trump won the Republican nomination for president in 2016, thanks to a Republican primary system he said was rigged and fraudulent, and then he won the general election that year and still said there was fraud in that election, there were millions of illegal votes cast in that election. Right, I mean, even in elections that he wins, he says there was fraud, right? Right through to the 2020 campaign, where even before the election, he claimed that election was fraudulent and that it shouldn't count. Why would you try to undermine faith in an election that you won? Why would you try to undermine faith in elections in other countries that most Americans can't spell? Why would you try to get everybody in your party to say that election results don't count, even when they're not in a position to reverse some sort of election result to put you back in power? It's so that the idea that elections don't count becomes the operating principle of the Republican Party. Say elections are messed up. Insist that you have proof of some kind that you can't show right now, but you have it. Proof that the elections are messed up. On the basis of your false claims that the elections are messed up, then set about actually messing up elections <laughs> to prove your point. That's the phrase that we're in now, right? There's 67 counties in Pennsylvania. In 50 of those 67 counties, the elections chiefs have left office since the last election because of threats and intimidation. 50 out of the 67 counties in the state. How smoothly do you think elections are going to go in that state this year? In Nevada, there's 17 counties. Election supervisors in 10 of the 17 counties in the state.